friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop, starting on a brand new huge project. It's to build a 12 string guitar. And we are going to start on this project a little different than in the past. Rather than just digging right in and start building the actual guitar, we're going to be building uh, some decorative binding for it very first thing. My friend John Manura from AccuSlice sent me some wonderful handmade wood binding that he made and I thought very strongly, in fact I really wanted to use that binding in this project. Unfortunately, it's not exactly what I wanted for this project, but I still could have used it. In fact, it would have been beautiful. But I don't think there's quite enough of it to do the whole thing. In other words, there's enough to do the body, but then to do the fretboard and then around the peg head and etc. So I've decided to just make my own using his tool, the AccuSlice tool that he invented. But I'm going to have Melissa insert the segment about uh, his binding right now that uh, he sent to me and you can see that and then we'll get back to building this binding. Hello my friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. I got a whole bunch of custom handmade binding from John Manura of AccuSlice. AccuSlice is a machine that you can add on to your bandsaw that accurately slices wood. John has sent me one of those machines for review and I have yet to make my actual video on it. I did cover it briefly in a shop talk, one of my earlier shop talks. I saw the video where John actually made this custom binding on his AccuSlice machine. Then to my surprise, it all showed up in the mail to me. It's beautiful stuff. I hope the camera will focus. You can see the decorative strips and inlay and he has it all accurately labeled here. Uh, as an example, this one is the base is maple. Then there, the laminates are padukes. So the dark color in this is the paduke. The light color is the maple. Beautiful stuff. And there's just all kinds of it. Here's some more. Um, this is uh, walnut, uh, yellow heart, and maple. Walnut, yellow heart, and maple. It is just beautiful. That's probably a better view of it right there. And then there's just, you know, there's some dark uh, stuff. And this is uh, bloodwood. It's just beautiful. Just very, very nice. A lot more maple, different, uh, I'm not going to go through every one of these, but there's a bunch more different maple with uh, different uh, laminates. Here's a Paduke and yellow heart with a laminate there. And then finally there's one more that uh, the base on this one is walnut and he used uh, yellow heart as the offsets. And that is just gorgeous stuff, just beautiful. So he did a wonderful job on this. John Manura of AccuSlice, thank you so much. We'll put a link in the description to the AccuSlice uh, website. If you uh, need uh, to do very detailed work on your bandsaw, the AccuSlice machine is a wonderful machine. As a matter of fact, I was getting ready to start making my custom laminates myself, my own laminate bindings. I'm thinking I may use some of his and actually detail it a bit more, believe it or not. I was thinking of making it very similar to what he has here, but I was also thinking of laminating it down the, the height of it here. Like for instance, he's got the laminates on the side. I was thinking of turning it on its edge, putting a white, dark, white laminate this way as well. So I may do that and I may just use some of John's here as my starting point because that would be much faster. So, golly, John, thank you so kindly. I really do appreciate it. Okay, well, that binding, as you saw, was very beautiful that John made with his machine that he invented. So now we're about to go over to the bandsaw using John's machine, his AccuSlice system, and slice up some cherry for the binding that we're about to make. Well, here I am over at the bandsaw. I've got the AccuSlice system mounted on the bandsaw already. I've got a sacrificial board, MDF, glued up here, this piece here. This is my cherry down here that I'm going to be slicing. 
And the first thing we do with this is slide it over to the blade. And so let's see if we can do that first. Just carefully slide it over to the blade until it touches the blade. Like that. I'm going to go ahead and lower this down. Keep it more accurate. Lock that into place. And once we get it there, then we lock everything into place. We lock everything down. And we can slide this down past the blade. We can turn in 50 thousandths on this dial over here that you really can't see, but I'm turning in 50 thousandths. That should be the blade width. Then I'm going to go ahead and turn in 20 thousandths for a board that we're going to cut. You know, I'm calling them boards. They're just little thin strips of wood, of course, but here we go. Let's see how it works. This will be my very first time ever trying to use it. I have switched camera angles. Technically that first cut was kind of a fail, but that was mostly because this board wasn't very even. The boards coming out of my sawmill aren't always the best. <laughs> this was a cherry board that we cut here on the farm. Anyway, uh, I'll try that yet again. So the, basically I just have it faced off now, so I'm going to dial in about 15 thousandths to cut off a real thin sliver. I'm having first time jitters using it, but uh, I think I've got it okay. I didn't dial in for my kerf again. I'm not sure what I'm going to get. I'm going to go ahead and dial in a little bit more. I'm dial in another 10 thousandths there. And we'll try another cut and see if we get anything off of this one. I think I'm still probably going to be shallow. I think because of that, I'll go ahead and just turn it on over a little bit further. We're going to cut off another uh, little thin shim here and see what happens. Well, that wasn't the best planned activity I've done in a while, but on the other hand, it turned out fairly nice. This is a really thin piece of cherry. If you know anything about cherry, it's extremely brittle. And look at there, I can bend it into a complete circle. That's how thin that is. Just to give you an idea, and it's going to range in depth a lot, but let me just see here. It's a, That's about... 48 thousandths in one place. Now this is not going to be consistent because that first cut was not consistent. There's 35 thousandths, 31 thousandths. Okay, so now the next cut should be consistent. This time I need to remember to dial in 50 thousandths for the blade, so we'll do that first. That's the blade curve. And now I want a, a board that would be about I'm going to say 20 thousandths thick, so I'll dial in another 20 thousandths on the dial here. And we should be good to go. Let's see if it, if it actually cuts a 20 thousandths thick board. I'll be a little bit surprised if it does because I think I, I had these magnets locked down there. I don't know if that would have affected it or not, but I don't think they were actually touching yet, so I don't know. I'm not doing very well so far, but we'll see. Well, that did a beautiful job on that. That really sawed a very nice thin strip. It's hard to imagine sawing a board that thin, really. 23 thousandths is what it measures. 22 and a half thousandths, so it's very accurate. 22 and a half thousandths. It's amazing how accurate it is. Down here, just for some reason, a little bit thicker, 25 thousandths. But that's still very good. 22 and a half thousandths again down a little further. So it's very, very, very accurate. You know, I wanted them to be about 20 thousandths of an inch thick. Seems incredibly thin. 
now, but that's what I want. I'm actually gonna run that through the sander maybe, or maybe not. It's really good enough probably to use on the edge like that for uh, binding. It's amazing to me that it cuts it that well. And the slower you go, the smoother it cuts. So that's why I was going slow. We're gonna try that yet again. All right, I'm gonna loosen the magnets this time. I'm gonna dial in 50 thousandths, which is one complete revolution. And then I'm gonna dial in another 20 thousandths. There's another 20 thousandths, so we should be able to make another board 20 thousandths of an inch thick. Here we go. say it's an amazing tool in that it cuts so smooth and it cuts so very accurately thin pieces. Let's just see how, how this one measures up. 25 thousandths, 25 thousandths, 25 thousandths exactly. It doesn't even vary at all. That's beautiful. Yeah, you can't hardly beat that. So, I'm going to do a lot more of that off camera and I'll show you the uh, next step. My friends, I got a lot of strips using the AccuSlice system and you saw how I did that and here's some of the strips that I ended up with. They're just going to be beautiful. I'm going to laminate all of these together. This is actually, instead of binding, this is actually going to be the back strips. I guess you'd call it purfling. I'm not really sure what their proper term is for that, but back strip separators, you know, for the three-piece back. These will go up through the, uh, the seam. But anyway, this is step one, is laminating a bunch of the alternate colored woods, which I, in this case, these are all woods that were cut right here on the farm. So we've got cherry and Osage orange. And so my next step is to take all of these strips. Uh, by the way, I, referring to the AccuSlice system, you know, I thought, well, it seems like it's a lot of work to glue, you know, all their board to that uh, sacrificial board, put it on there, you know, run it through. It seemed like a lot of extra setup time. I thought, well, I could do that just with a regular fence, you know. No, you can't. I mean, honestly, seriously, when you try to cut things this accurately, ain't not a chance. There's just, there just is no chance that you can cut it as accurately running it through a fence. I tried and I tried and it just doesn't work. You put it on that AccuSlice and it slices it perfectly. I'm not exactly sure why it's so different, but it is really different. And, you know, it, it's not an inexpensive machine. It is costly, but boy, if you need to do a lot of detail like this, there's nothing better than that thing. Like I said, I'm just being honest. It's a little fidgety on all the setup, but once you get it set up and you're ready to start slicing boards, oh my gosh. That thing is awesome. There's no measuring. You just reach over there and you spin the dial, spin it one complete turn for you know the blade width. Another complete turn gives you another 50 thousandths. And if that's the size board you want, you just run it through. I mean, it's just awesome. That part I love. I gotta tell you, I, I really like it. And man, I mean, you couldn't hardly get a more accurate set of boards than what I got right there. That's the smooth side there. The, the other side was rough cut. But look how nice that is. Just as perfect as it can be. So, now it's over to the uh, vacuum press. Vacuum pressing systems also sent me a very wonderful gift, a way to clamp all this stuff together. So that's where we're headed next. I've got all the strips over here at the table, and this is actually my table saw that doubles as a table. We don't have a lot of room in the shop. So I'm gonna get the glue on this now and I'm gonna use a roller to spread it really quick. Then I'm gonna put some tape around it, put it on this board, put it inside of here and suck the air out of this thing. At least that's the goal. 
This never goes as easy as it should, but we'll see how well it does go this time. I'm using Tight Bond 3 on this. I do not ever want this to come apart. Tight Bond 3 is a good choice. I got a little more glue on the first one than I needed, but that's okay. I'd rather have a little more than not enough in this case. Put a nice thin bead down there and see if I can get it to spread. I'm going to put the glue on both pieces for the most part because I really want this to make a good bond. This purfling is not a very strong thing, but if you get enough glue on this, get it all glued together, then it should be almost as strong as regular wood. But when you put all these little fragment pieces, and you'll see later how many fragments there are, there's going to be a bunch. Well, if it would only cooperate, it would be a lot easier, but it generally just won't. There's always got to be something that's got to give you trouble. I'm going to try to keep all of these to one end here. This is The roller is definitely the fastest thing I've found so far for doing this when you're really in a hurry. It's looking really good. It's a lot of extra work putting glue on both sides, but on the other hand, I think it pays big dividends. Looking good. This is going easier than I was expecting, actually. So that generally means something else is going to go wrong. But so far, so good. The vacuum pressing systems bag here and all of that is uh, so awesome to use. It just makes this so much simpler. Trying to clamp all this stuff is a pain. Now if you had a specially made clamp like my buddy John Manure does, it might work okay, but I don't have that clamp. But I do have this vacuum pressing systems bag and it sure is awesome. Okay, so there you go. I got them all stacked up just to keep them from sliding around. And of course, on camera, the tape has to tear. Just That's just like perfect par for the course whenever you get the camera on. Can't believe it. All right, get rid of that tape. And I'm just going to... Actually, I'm just going to tear off some. It's just easier to deal with it. And I'm going to tape around this. It's just mostly to keep it kind of from sliding too much. Hopefully it'll do the job. Don't even know if it'll work for sure, but I think it will. Oh, come on. The tape keeps tearing. <laughs> it's just something has to happen every time. Whenever you're in a hurry. I'm actually going to go ahead and put a couple more on these. Because I have a feeling this is going to want to slide a lot. And why not? Tape is cheap. Okay, there we go. The way this works is there's grooves down this board and the air can get underneath this stuff. And there's a place right here where the suction tube goes in and it sticks in there very tightly. So it sucks air all through this whole thing. So we're going to put it in the bag. And then we're going to put that little suction tube, which is right here. You can't really see it off on camera, but it's right here. And I'll push it up through this thing. Got it in there. Get that set right on top. And then we need to uh, fasten up this end. This plastic snaps over this little round tube. And I, honestly, with my thumbs the way they are with my arthritis, I can't press it. So, I'm going to try using these squeeze clamps and hopefully I can get it on there with these squeeze clamps. I, someone recommended that and I think it's a good idea. I haven't tried it yet. So, here we go. Well, why the clamp's not releasing, I don't know. Uh, Nothing ever works good on camera, that's all I can tell you. Ah, oh, 
shoot, man. Maybe try, try a different one. I tell you, it's just got to be something all the time. Yep, that one's working a little better anyway. That is, that does seem to work better than using my hands because I just don't have the strength in my thumbs anymore with the arthritis. Okay, I'm just double checking that it's clamped down everywhere. I think it is, but I'm just double checking it. I think I can squeeze it that little bit with my hand. I think it's okay. We'll turn on the vacuum system and see what happens. I've got it on auto cycle, so it should work. Auto cycle is on the top, and that should suck the air out of this here in just a few seconds. Well, a few minutes, two or three minutes. It's already got it sucked down and the glue is squeezing out and it's already turned off. It's, it did it that fast. You saw it live right there. Man, that worked great. I can't think of any way to clamp that better than that. That is awesome. When you try to squeeze this stuff together, it starts sliding and it slides apart. You have to do it to understand how complicated it is, but this worked perfectly. Now, I didn't put wax paper down first, and I kind of wish I would have, but I don't think it'll be a problem. Kind of wish I would have put a little wax paper down underneath that first. But I think it'll be okay. Man, I can't believe how tight that uh, sealed it so quick and it hasn't kicked back on yet. It usually recycles itself in a little bit. But I think because that's so small, it probably is sealing better than normal. That's awesome. I am so thankful to vacuum pressing systems for giving me this thing. It is just wonderful for this kind of work. Well, my friends, you can see after getting it out of the vacuum bag, it uh, did a real nice job. I went ahead and ran that through the uh, joiner and then I ran this through my commercial thickness uh, sander there to knock off some of the edges and the glue and stuff. So I've got it fairly well squared up, and I guess we're ready now to go to the bandsaw and start cutting the herringbone pattern into this. Let's see how it goes. Well, my friends, I'm at the bandsaw. I'm all set up to start cutting these, and did quite a bit of pra practice work off camera with some just scrap wood, and I, I made myself a zero clearance uh, insert here so that little pieces won't fall down through. I put an extension on the 45 here to make it longer to keep everything nice and lined up. Plus this backing right here helps make these smoother and cut them off more uh, perfect. There's just a lot of little detail-y things that I did. Don't claim to be any kind of expert at making this stuff, but I want to try to rule out as many problems as I can before I start. I have cut a couple of test pieces. I know they line up, so I'm ready to go ahead and go for broke here, and we'll see how it goes. decided to go ahead and just shut it down and show you what the uh, result is and then I'll do the rest of it off camera but you just take these two pieces and you put them together like so and then you get your perfect herringbone pattern now, I don't have that on autofocus hopefully you can see the pattern there I think it uh, looks pretty good you just take the two pieces that you're slicing off and you you know, just turn them in for end and then they make a herringbone pattern. You're cutting this on a 45, of course. We can re-slice this and get, you know, quite a few pieces out of this. You know, at a hundred thousandths of an inch thick. So anyway, all these have to be glued back together. I'll, you know, show you what it looks like when we get to that next step where we're putting these back together. My friends, I've cut many, many, many of those little pieces now. 
a lot more than you can see on camera here. And I've made myself a right angle straight edge. And I've got a piece of parchment paper, wax paper, whatever you want to call it, inside here. It's actually parchment paper in this case. And my idea is to go through and glue these in, glue these together, and then just clamp them along here and, you know, just keep adding to it. In fact, I was starting with a little short piece like this, and then I've got a longer piece to clamp it up with as I get further along. But to start off with, I'll just use this, clamp it like so, and uh, keep going and slide this down until it's no longer long enough, and then go to the next length. So that's my plan. You know how my plans can change, but that's it for the moment. Uh, this brush here is not much good, but it'll probably suffice as a glue brush. So I've got a uh, Tight Bond Type 3 here. This is the kind of glue that uh, is waterproof, doesn't come apart. And I figure for this application, that is exactly what you want. Something that doesn't come apart. I'm not going to put a ton of glue on here, and I'm going to start by just putting glue on one edge, on, on one face. I think that should be sufficient. The thing is that I want them lined up perfectly, and if you get started lined up perfectly, then it shouldn't be too big a deal the rest of the way. Some of these pieces have uh, little uh, fuzzies on them, and so I'm trying to knock those off as I go. I could just stop and knock off fuzzies, I guess. It'd be easier to keep going. But why do anything the easy way? If you can do it the complicated way, that's always the way to go. And now the trick is I have to glue the end joints here. I have to get glue on that too. So so here we go. Hadn't thought about the fact that I'm going to have glue squeeze out on this side as well. So I mean I can fold this up and clamp that way I guess, but just makes it a little bit more complicated. I think because of that, I'm going to just pause right here and cut some extra of this off to get it out of my way. So, like here's the first couple. That looks really good. You can see there how that looks right through here. I don't know of a better way to do this. If you all have a better way, then please put that in the comments because I'm just inventing as I go here. Inventions on the fly sometimes uh, need a little refinement. The fuzzies are only on one edge, so it's pretty easy to get rid of them. Well, you can probably see my process there. I'm not going to spend a lot more time on camera showing you that. I just uh, have a lot of this to do yet. And... I'll get her done. I may refine my process a little bit. If I do, I'll show you that refinement. But right now, this is the way I'm doing it. And it's not too terribly tedious. Just a little time consuming. It's definitely not as hard as working a jigsaw puzzle. So we'll show you what that looks like a little bit later. Well, there's what the first one looks like all glued up. You can see the herringbone, the full length of the deal there. It's a little over, and it's just about 21 inches is about what it turns out to be. That gives you a little bit of room on the length. But anyway, that's, that worked out pretty darn well. Um, everything looks real even to me, so I'm pretty happy with that. Got as many clamps on it as I could get on there. Actually, that's not true. I'm sure I could get more on there, but I think I have sufficient number. And we'll let that set another 20 minutes or so, and then we'll take it out and we'll glue up the next one. Well, my friends, I have spent entirely, and without any hesitation to be an exaggeration, entirely too much time making these pieces. Oh my gosh, 
This is eating my lunch and then some. But I'm down to the final stretch. I have these yellow pieces. You know, they're all put together. There's three, three strips this wide. And the idea now is you take uh, and sandwich one of each strip with uh, two pieces of the uh, white. That's what you end up with is you got the white on both edges, keep it nice and neat. And then once you get all that glued up and pressed together, then you just make slices down this and you have all those strips. And I, I'm hoping to get, well, a minimum of four, but I think I probably could get probably six out of each one of these. So that'd be about 18 pieces. And I figure $1,800 is a fair price. Because <laughs> it has taken me the biggest part of three days to do this. And of course, I've had a million interruptions. Don't get me wrong. I've everything from going to the airport to, you know, I mean, there's just been all kinds of interruptions. So I can't really blame just this stuff, but that's all I've gotten done in the last three days. So anyway, or maybe it's even been four. I don't know. I'm losing track. So the next thing to do is, I think what I'm going to do is uh, sandwich all these together and put them in the vacuum press because that would make this very easy, very quick, and flatter than a pancake. So I think that's the way I'm going to do it. The air conditioner is running, or the heater in this case, but anyway, I'm over here at the table saw, which doubles as a table when it's not a saw. And I'm ready to glue up all these laminates. The idea is I'm going to use the Tight Bond 3, which is a permanent glue. I've got a piece of this uh, parchment paper folded down the middle. So the, the center one of these, I'm going to encase it in the parchment paper to keep the top one and the bottom one from gluing to it. At least that's the plan. This could get messy. And then I'm going to try to wrap the whole thing with, with this shrink wrap, then slide it into the bag. We'll see how all that plan goes. First problem I'm encountering is I'm making a mess on the newspaper, which I don't want because it's going to get glue on both sides of this, and I don't want that. I'm not quite sure how to get around that. Bummer. That's not good. I'm going to back up and punt. Well, I think I solved my own problem here. I'm, I'm just going to uh, do the smart thing and work on the high stack and spread the glue on the high stack so that I don't get it down on the newspaper. I didn't think that through real well on the first one. But we should be a little better now. The noise you heard in the background was cleaning Melissa. <laughs> she keeps her area and the office area pretty much spotless. So basically that's how they're going together in the press. This will keep them from sticking together, at least that's my hope. Well, this is another one of those deals that's just about as awkward as socks on a rooster here, but uh, I'm getting it there. I'll eventually figure out my method. Okay, well that got them all wrapped up. That got them all lined up. Should keep the mess to a minimum, and hopefully they won't stick together. Now I'll put it in my vacuum pressing systems bag. I was able to press it together with my fingers back to my palms rather than using my thumbs. The arthritis won't let me use the thumbs that way, but the fingers seem to work okay, that method. So now everything's in good shape. It's sitting on top of that plantain that has air distributed all the way around it. Hopefully you can see it there. 
We'll zoom in just a little bit. And we'll turn on the switch to automatic. Should start drawing the air out, and there it is. It's starting to come out really quickly. And that boy mashes it down. There is nothing that you could do that would clamp it better than that. Vacuum Pressing Systems is a great company. They sent me this bag for use on musical instruments and I have used it quite a few times now. If you need uh, to clamp anything flat especially, anything that's, you know, you can do other things, but especially things that are flat, man, there is nothing better than this thing right here because it will, it'll just smash the whole area completely flat. It's just wonderful. Well, my friends, I'm at the point now where I've got three of these made and I need to cut them into strips. And I don't want to do one at a time. I want to use that new uh, AccuSlice jig that, uh, that my buddy made for me, John Manura. And I want to use that because it's very accurate. I seriously had my doubts when I first got that thing, but after using it one time, it convinced me that that's the way to cut stuff if you really want it accurate. Yeah, it's an expensive machine, but if you really, if accuracy really counts, that thing's what you need. And so I'm trying to figure out how can I attach all of these to that deal and then slice them uh, all together. And so here's what I'm coming up with. I'm putting the blue masking tape and between the blue masking tape, I'm going to use a little CA glue. And I'm going to then, I'll turn you down here to show you what I'm doing. So I'll put the CA glue on it. I'll line it up here on the table. I've got some wax paper here to keep, hopefully keep it from sticking to my table and try to glue them together like that. Do these first two and see how that goes. And then I'll add this next one. I haven't put the tape on that one yet. So might as well get the tape on it, I guess. Okay, here goes nothing. We'll see how, how this works. Hope I don't make a mess. And every single time on camera, the glue jar doesn't work. So, every single time. I don't think that ever fails. All right, let's try it again. Here we got glue coming out now. Whoops, I didn't really want to get a ton of glue on there. And I think I'm going to spritz this with the accelerator. I'm going to stand them up and put them together and hope that they go together the way I want them to. Well, I guess that worked. Now we'll... Oh, I didn't get the tape on this side either so I gotta get the tape on this one after doing this much work I hope this is not a gigantic fail because trust me I have spent a lot of time on this it seems like it's working but then again I'm not so sure for some reason they're drawn apart down here on this end why is that something got in there doggone it wouldn't you know something stuck in there I can see it it's just like, give me a break. Don't know what that was. Uh, now I'm afraid to, to put the glue in there because, I don't know, it just doesn't seem like it works. There's always something has to happen. It's amazing how something has to happen every time. Especially when you do this much work on something. You don't want hassles. You just want it to work. I don't know why, but that one there, for some reason, got lots of gaps in it. Like there's a gap in it right here, too. And I don't really think I want the gaps in there because I'm afraid it's going to uh, cause it to break out. But... <sighs> Not much I can do about it. We're just going to have to go with that. 
Now my idea is to glue this to the waste board that uh, goes on his jig and then we'll slice it and see what happens. Well my friends, I'm using the CA glue and tape method here also to hold this to this sacrificial fence. And I've already adjusted for the blade width and I've adjusted for about a 20 thousandths cut to true up this edge because this edge is not very straight at the moment. So it's all over but the crying, here we go. Well, that did an impressive job from my perspective here. Looking at it, it looks beautiful. So now I'm gonna release these two clamps behind here. I don't think you can actually see them. These magnetic clamps, I'm gonna release them. That frees up the carriage. I'll push this down past the blade this way. And now I'll go one full turn for the blade width. So I'll bring it back around. I'm on 20, I'll go to 20. And now, I want 110 thousandths, so I gotta go two more full revolutions. So I'll go around to 20, that's another 50. And I'll go around to 20 again, there's 100. And now I want 10 more thousandths, so there's five and there's 10 thousandths. Then I'll lock these back down. So we should be getting 110 thousandths this cut. And that's what it looks like it's gonna do, just based on looking at it there. So, ain't no time to try, but right now, so here we go. Well, in my opinion, that's just about as nice as it gets right there. That looks really good. I'm real happy with that. There's three pieces there. Of course, they have to be separated, and I'm not gonna do that on camera at the moment. I'll try that a little bit later, and with a, and I'll show you my process for that later. But uh, that cut it really nicely. Let me just see how thick it ended up being. Okay, so I'm hoping it's 110 thousandths, 114 thousandths. And actually, I was expecting 115, and the, the reason is, that this blade apparently is only about 45 thousandths and we're adjusting for 50. So that's why it's a little bit large and I was expecting it to be a little large. I was sure hoping I had at least 110 though because our tops are right at 100. And so that gives us a little bit of sanding fudge factor there. So we're in just perfect shape. Couldn't be much better. All right, so once again, I'm going to loosen these uh, two magnet clamps it's on 30 presently, so I'm going to spin it around to 30, and that will take up the blade. And then I'm going to go around to 30 again, and that's my first 50 thousandths cut. Then I'll go around to 30 again, that gives me 100 thousandths. And then I want 10 more, so I go up to 40 now. So now we're on 40. I lock it back down, and we're ready to cut again. I'm not gonna film any more of this because I'm cutting extremely slow, but uh, anyway, that shows you the process. Well, well, my friends, this is what we ended up with. And actually, we ended up with another one too that I've already separated. So there was uh, six of them that were right at about 110 plus thousandths of an inch. Actually, you're 115 thousandths. The last one that I cut, I made it a little bit thicker. It was about 117, 18 thousandths. And then the very last one that was still stuck to the sacrificial fence was about 130 thousandths. So anyway, very, very, very good. Six full big strips like that containing three each. So that's 18 overall strips. That's enough for nine guitar backs, so. More than I'll probably need in this lifetime, unfortunately. <laughs>
but at least I have them and I can use them for other things. You could use them for decorative uh, jewelry boxes or anything else too. Don't get any ideas. I'm not going into that business. So to separate these, you can use almost anything, just something that will go in between there and, and pop the tape loose. And you can actually just wiggle them back and forth a little bit, just slowly and, and eventually the tape gives. You gotta be careful, you don't wanna break them after all this work, but eventually the tape finally gives like that. Again, it still has to be done kind of slow. They don't separate in equal places. <laughs> it's probably the quickest way after you get it separated is just take a knife and cut up through there or something and get it over with. Then it's just a matter of peeling off the extra tape. The CA glue tape method seems to be the method of choice for me. And I've seen John Manura using his device. He's used regular glue, he's used epoxy, he's used tape. I've seen him use just about everything. And in my opinion, the tape and the CA glue is the way to go. Especially if you've got it setting down on your table. So there's not much stress on it. So it's just mostly there to hold it in place. And seems to work very well. John, you've created a wonderful invention. I love that machine. I first thought it was going to be a little bit too, uh, you know, I don't know, tedious for me to deal with. But after seeing how accurate it is and how accurately it cuts things and smoothly it cuts things, there's no other machine like that. You can do your best to guide it through one of those fences. I guarantee you, you won't get this kind of accuracy. I've tried it. I've heard John say that, and I had my doubts, but after trying it, he's 100% correct. So John, thank you very much for that wonderful AccuSlice machine. You all check him out there on his uh, website, AccuSlice.